Hello, everyone. Uh, I hope you are enjoying the conference so far. Uh, today, we are talking about uh, incremental static regeneration, um, a feature uh, from Next.js framework that we can use to improve our static sites or the way we render content in our web applications. And well, I hope you enjoy the talk. First of all, my name is Facundo Giuliani. I'm from uh, Buenos Aires, Argentina. Um, I'm a system engineer, uh, also a full stack developer. Uh, I work at a company called multitracks.com from Austin, Texas. Uh, I work as a remote developer. I live in Buenos Aires, Argentina. Um, I'm also an Auth0 ambassador. Auth0 is a platform for authentication and authorization. I'm a Cloudinary Media Developer Expert. Cloudinary is a platform to handle images and video. And I'm also a Git Kraken ambassador. Git Kraken is a client for uh, Git with a user interface. The talk is not related to these three products. So if you want to talk about them, uh, we can do that after the talk. Uh, those are my, my channels. My website is fgiuliani.com. My Twitter account is Facundo Surdo, and my GitHub account is F. Giuliani. So first of all, uh, we will start talking about what static web pages are. So we define this concept, and then we go ahead with uh, all the specific topic that uh, I define for this talk. A static web page is a web page that is delivered to the user's browser exactly as a store. A web page can be composed by JavaScript files, HTML files, uh, or CSS files, or all of them. And we call a static web page one where it's the same content for all the users that are browsing our website. We deliver right from the server the files that are stored uh, in it and how they are stored in it without any change. That will be the concept of static web page. Um, if you are a guy from the 90s like me, for instance, uh, you will remember the first web pages and websites. Uh, that's probably the origin or what we talk about when, when we said uh, static web pages. Uh, the concept and, and, and the pages itself evolve with the time, but just to keep in mind that concept or, or that idea. But if you want to give um, a more customized experience for the users that are browsing your site or visiting your web application, you need to generate dynamic content that depends on them or, or some conditions or, or, or some uh, logic. And that's the case of the dynamic web pages. A dynamic web page is a web page where some of the content is generated dynamically when needed. So for instance, um, we need, uh, we have a site with subscriptions and depending on the users that this browse in our website, we will display one con one type of content or the other. And to define that or to generate that content, we need to know which user is browsing our site and if he's paying or not for our service, etc. So the difference here between these two, let's say types of websites, is that for the static websites, we deliver files and content that is stored in the server as it is per the user request. On the other hand, for the dynamic web pages, we deliver content that is probably, it is uh, stored at the server also with the static files, but we also generate dynamic content using templating engines or databases or um, algorithms or different uh, data sources to generate content dynamically and deliver to the user a, an HTML document that the user will see as if it exists and it's stored in the web server, but that we generated dynamically at that moment per request. This um, way of generating um, the dynamic content uh, it can be in, in, in two main uh, different ways or two main different types, let's say. The first way of generating dynamic content that we will mention is the server-side rendering. 
uh, we talk about server-side rendering when the HTML content that we generate is done by the web server. So a user uh, browse our website with a browser. Uh, we request some um, information or content or pages to the web server. And is the web server the one that will generate this dynamic content and deliver an HTML file to the user that is browsing our website? The other type of generating dynamic content is the client side rendering, where the HTML content is rendered directly in the browser using JavaScript. So in this case, we will render an, a root web page, let's say, or an original web page where we will have some dynamic content that is generated by JavaScript calling the same web server where the HTML document is stored or other web servers or other services or, or, or doing calculation. So to, to differentiate these types of rendering, for the server-side rendering, we had some programming languages like ASP.NET, Python, or Node.js that uses JavaScript. But for client-side rendering, we have uh, JavaScript frameworks like Angular, Vue.js, or React. So these frameworks work in the browser, I mean, in the client, and they generate dynamic content, and they request to the web server by you, but using JavaScript for that, and not having to reload the page or request a different HTML document to the web server. So let's take as an example, uh, React. In the, the workflow of loading a web page or a website that uses uh, client-side rendering and React framework is that we will request a web page to the server uh, using a, a web browser, right? The server will send the response to the browser, which will be an HTML document. This HTML document has some uh, attached or linked JavaScript file or code that will be downloaded from the uh, server. And this JavaScript code will include all the uh, React framework and all the logic that we need to initialize our web application and generate the dynamic content that we want to display to the user. So after we downloaded the, uh, the HTML document, we downloaded the JavaScript files, we executed the React framework and initialized it, we will have now a viewable and interactable uh, page that we can use. On the other hand, the server side rendering, we um, request the web page to the web server. Uh, the, ser the web server respond uh, an HTML document. Now that we have the HTML document, we have a viewable version of our web application. In the meantime, we are downloading the JavaScript code or the JavaScript files. The JavaScript code is executed. Also, React is initialized. The, all, all the initial code that we need for our application is executed. But in the meantime, we are seeing the web page. And when all the JavaScript code is executed, we have now an interactable website. So those are the two approaches that we can have to generate to start our web application. But Let's go back to the static web pages that we mentioned before, because even though this is like the original uh, way the, the web pages were um, created or thought, the truth is that even though uh, client-side rendering and, and server-side rendering was developed with the years, static web pages have several um, advantages or pros uh, comparing to dynamic pages. For instance, um, a static web page is faster because we don't need any processing in the web server or in the client to generate the content that we want to display. It's just downloading a static asset, a static file, and displaying it as it is uh, in the website. 
We can also talk about uh, content delivery networks and, and cloud services that offer uh, these CDNs, these networks to um, deliver static content in a, in a better way, in an improved way, so we could be um, storing and, and hosting our web application in one of these CDNs. And that's something that we can't do with a, for instance, server side rendered web page because we need some processing from the server side. The server web pages are cheaper because uh, storing static uh, files is, uh, we need less processing from the web server. It's easy to maintain because we only have to copy or move files from uh, to the web server or, or change them without uh, having to to keep aware of the logic that, that we have working in our web application. It's more secure because we don't have code being executed with every user request to our web application. Um, there is this phrase that says, uh, there is no code more secure than no code. If we are not executing code, it's more secure than executing code in every request and having to verify that everything is working as expected and being aware of menaces that we can have uh, in, in, in the execution of our code. It's easier to scale because if we are storing static files, the only thing that we need to do is add more storage to the web server. And it is stable because we can have a lot, really a lot of users uh, visiting our website and as they are only downloading files and they are not using uh, server processing to generate the content, um, it, it's going to work uh, faster and we will have less problems than having to process every request with a web server. So having all this in mind, in the last years, a new tool or type of tool was uh, created or defined that are called static site generators, or well, the process is static site generation. It is a process of compiling and rendering a web app at build time and generating static assets like HTML files, JavaScript, and CSS files while we are building or compiling our solution, our, our project. So static site generators, uh, they start from different data sources like um, databases, APIs that we can call, APIs that we can call also, um, template files, uh, static files that we can have in our project, content management systems that we are going to talk about that later, but uh, you can have a content management system like uh, WordPress, let's say, with, with a backend where users or editors can add information to the, the, the CMS, the, the content management system, and we can grab that information uh, in this project. And all those data sources and, and template files and static files will be uh, processed at build time by this static site generator. And whenever we execute this process, we will generate static assets like HTML files, CSS files, and JavaScript files that will be part of our web application. There's a, um, a concept that is about uh, atomic build or atomic deployment uh, that says that whenever we execute this build with a static site generator, we have to be sure that all the static pages that we are generating are correct and there's no error. If there's an error, the complete process uh, roll back. And uh, if there isn't any error, we will be generating all the static files that we need. And right at that time, we will deploy the complete website. So we will generate the complete website uh, using static files or we won't uh, generate any file at all. That's atomic deployment. Um, having this static uh, generator concept, one of the frameworks that allows static site generation uh, that we can use is Next.js. 
Next.js is a React framework that allows creating user interfaces, static pages, and server-side rendered pages. So it's a framework that is built on top of React, and React is a framework that is built on top of JavaScript, that allows us all these different types of rendering a web page. We can render it using server-side rendering. Uh, so whenever we receive a request from the user, we will generate the page uh, from the ground, let's say. We can have static site generation uh, where we will um, create all the static content and all the static pages that we will use in our page at build time. Or we can use the React um, philosophy, let's say, to, to create uh, user interfaces and client side rendering. So again, to, to, I will mention again, but uh, Next.js work uh, in a page-based way. So we will have um, one JavaScript file or one React file for each page that we want to handle in our web application. We have the possibility to create dynamic routes. So uh, ne Next.js uses the name of the files and, and the directory where the file is stored. Um, using this path is the same that we will use as a URL to browse the page uh, when we are visiting the, the website. These dynamic routes allow us to uh, generate routes that will be um, executed or analyzed at runtime. We can generate uh, static site pages I mean, static site generation, we can uh, do that at build time and generate pages at build time. We can have pages that are generated uh, by server side rendering or client side rendering uh, at runtime. And, and this is cool because as, as Next.js work uh, in a page based way, uh, we don't have to determine a way of rendering content for the complete website but we will do that per page. So we can have a page that is generated using server-side rendering, and we can have a, a different page that was generated statically at build time. Uh, we can also create API routes, which are like serverless functions. This is code that is executed in the web server uh, using also React and JavaScript. And it, it has a cool feature to work uh, locally, which is a fast refresh on developed environment. You can work with that. And I don't know if you are using static site generation, you don't have to wait for the static pages to be generated. You will have a fast refresh whenever you change the code in the files that are used um, in your project, into, in your web application. So you apply the changes and when you save, the, the develop environment, the development server will uh, automatically refresh and display the page with the changes applied, which is super cool. So these are some of the functions that we use in Next.js. Get server side props is a function that we will call if we want to execute code um, in a server side uh, rendering way. So whenever a user calls this uh, page or execute the, the core of this page because he's visiting it, uh, we will execute this function and generate uh, code and logic. Get static props is the same idea, but at build time and generating static pages and static assets. Another function that we use for static uh, site generation is static path. As I said, uh, we have uh, dynamic routes in Next.js. Let's say, for instance, a blog. We can have the main page of a blog in a site, and we will have one page per blog post. As I don't know, we are using, for instance, uh, a database to store all the information related to the blog post. We don't know which are the routes that we will use for all the blog posts that we have available. So in this case, what we do is to create one page with a dynamic group, and we define a way of getting all the paths that we want to um, have and execute for all the different blog posts. 
So this is the function that we will use in this case. We will have a, a property uh, in a JSON object that we return to the main page, which is paths, with, with a list of all the paths that, that we will um, generate statically to be available to the users when they visit our website and not having to generate the dynamic content uh, on the fly, on, on the right time. And we also have a property that is called fallback. If we define fallback uh, as false, it means that if a user is visiting uh, a path that doesn't exist, we will display a follow for page saying that there's an error and the page doesn't exist. But if we set that to true, we will display um, a loading page uh, that will keep the user there waiting for a server-side rendering um, code to be executed and generate content to display to the user. If we use blocking, on the other hand, for, uh, for this follow-up property, this server-side uh, code will be um, always executed without displaying any uh, loading state. That is in case that the, the content that we want to generate is not that big and we don't have to wait a lot. So we have all these functions to be used for uh, with Next.js to generate static pages or server-side rendering pages. The problem is that this atomic deployment that I mentioned before, um, we can have that for 10 different pages, 20 different pages, 100 different pages that we want to generate at build time. But the thing is that if we start generating dynamic routes that um, start increasing the amount of paths that they have to generate statically at build time, and we uh, get more and more pages to generate at build time, um, the, the, this, this build time will increase and increase and increase. And if we have really a lot of pages to generate when we are executing the static site generator, uh, probably the processing of uh, generating the complete site would take several minutes. Uh, and that's probably something that we don't want and we don't have we, we, we don't want to wait. So as the atomic deployment mentioned, we need to generate all the static assets and verify that everything is working before doing a deploy. And this is a problem. I mean, if we want to uh, maintain a super big platform, super big web application, this is something that we should evaluate. So for these cases, Next.js framework um, launch this new feature, this new way of generating content, which is called incremental static regeneration. It enables developer to use static site generation on a per page basis, but without having to reveal the entire site. So this is allowing us to generate static files or static pages per page. I mean, um, yeah, in a page-based way. So this is how it works. We will use the same functions that we mentioned before for static site generation and server site rendering if we want. And we will add a new revalidate property. It has a value that is measured in seconds and that means the amount of time that uh, we will, let's say, use a cached version of a page. So for instance, let's say that, I don't know, I'm using as a data source for my web application, uh, a content management system like WordPress. And I generate all the, all the static pages at build time uh, for my blog let's say, we are generating all the post pages for my blog. And one of the editors of, of the blog, uh, take a look and, and see that there's a typo, for instance, in the blog title or in the content. So we need to regenerate the, the blog page. I mean, we don't want to display the typo. So the editor goes to the content management system, 
edit the content of the uh, blog that the, that will be stored in the database that we use to generate all the pages for all the blog posts. But now we have to generate the static web page for that blog post in particular. And here is the thing. If we want to use a uh, static site generation, we will need to generate the complete list of blog post pages at build time. And that's something that we don't want to do every time we are editing the content uh, of any of the blog posts that compone our blog. So in this case, what we are going to do is we will generate a cache version of the complete website. We know with all the blog posts or a selection of blog posts that we need. Let's say that we, I don't know, have uh, 20,000 blog posts in our website. Well, probably we can, I don't know, um, generate the static files for the latest uh, 1,000 blog posts that were written in our platform. And we will generate 1,000 uh, static web pages, static files. For the other 19,000, we will keep that as a server-side rendering with a fallback. A fallback that will be executed because the page, if a user wants to see an older blog post, he will visit the URL and as the static uh, site doesn't exist, we will need to generate that using server-side rendering. But we are adding this revalidate uh, property that is uh, 60 seconds, for instance. So we will have the static pages that we generated at build time and the server side rendering page that we generate because a user visit that page that didn't exist before. And for the uh, period of 60 seconds, whenever a user visit that same page, we will display the cache version of the page that we have at that and that we generated before. If a user comes after 60 seconds from that moment of generation of the, of the page, and the user requests the same page, what we will do is display the page that is cached and in the background, we will trigger a, a processing, I mean, we will trigger a process to generate a static version of that page in the background. I mean, it, it, that's not what we are going to display to the user and that's not something that the user will have to wait to see. So, when we have the, this new version of the page generated, we will um, update the cache and uh, we will have this second version of the page alive. So if a user comes after that to visit the same page, we will display the updated version of the page. So in this case, for instance, we generate the blog post that I mentioned before in the example. We will display the page with the typo, the first 60 seconds, and when after 61 seconds, uh, a user comes and visit the same blog post, we will display the page with the typo. But in the background, the process will call again the content management system to bring all the information related to the blog post. It will generate the, the static page for that blog post again with the typo fixed now. And if a user comes, I don't know, in 15 minutes or so, he will see the new version of the page without the typo. So what is cool about this? As I mentioned before, we can uh, handle the amount of static pages that we want to generate at build time. If we, if we generate less pages at build time, we will have faster builds. But if we generate more static pages um, at build time, we will have a higher cache. So we will have less uh, pages to generate using server-side rendering. The headless CMS is something to consider. I said WordPress because it's a well-known content management system, but headless CMSs are a content management system that only have the backend part. So the editors can generate all the data that we, we use in um, our websites and web applications without being tied to the programming language or, or a certain programming language. In the case of WordPress, it works using PHP, so we are tied to use the database that WordPress generate and PHP language for all the templating and all the front end of our web application. 
They can let CMSs offer us the possibility to only generate the content that we want to use. And uh, this uh, cache version that we are generating and that we are offering to the users will be stored um, through all the deployments. So we, if we uh, have, we are continually deploying the site, all the cache version of the pages will remain there. The problem with this is that we are breaking this atomic or immutable deployment that we mentioned before, because we are generating pages separately and not the complete site, the complete platform with all the static pages. I want to display uh, a quick demo. I think I have a couple of minutes. So um, what I will show you here is, uh, this is like a boilerplate uh, application generated with uh, Next. All the code is generated when you execute create next app uh, package. And what I did was to create three different dynamic routes. We have one dynamic route for server side rendering, well, we where we have content that is generated at server side rendering. So whenever a user visits this page, we will generate a new version of the page. What we are going to do in this code, I can share the, the repository later, so you can take a look uh, at it. Uh, what we are going to do is to display the time where the, when the page is being generated. So this time should change whenever we refresh the page or whenever a user visits this page. And we will display the slug that we are visiting, which is a dynamic thing that we will use. We can use this slug uh, from different sources if we want. Then we will have a static site uh, generated version that we will generate with get static props, all the static pages that we need for our website. And here are the paths that we are going to generate. We will generate a, a post one and post two, an example of the blog post that I mentioned before, let's say. And we will put a fallback in false. So that means that if a user visits uh, a slug that we don't have in our website, we will display a 404 error. And we have another route, a dynamic route, using uh, incremental static regeneration, which is the same as the previous one, but we will have a fallback blocking, so the user will be able to generate dynamic routes and dynamic slugs besides the ones generated statically at build time, which are going to be post one and post two. And we will have a revalidate property of 15 minutes. Oh, sorry, sorry, 15 seconds. So for 15 seconds, we will always display the same version of the page, which is the one cached. I'm going to execute this. I'm going to run npm run build. What this is going to do is to analyze all the pages that we need to generate if you see here, we are generating post one, post two for incremental static regeneration and um, static site generation, because those are static files. They are being generated now at build time. And we will have a server side version, which is the last one, that we are not generating anything at build time. So let's make the application start. We are going to run uh, run npm ram start. This is the uh, development server. So what we are going to do is to visit localhost 3000. This is the, the home page. And what I'm going to do is first visit the server side rendering. And let's say uh, blog one. So this is the log that we are uh, visiting. And this was updated at 4, 11, sorry, the two hours of differences. I'm in Argentina, we are in different time zones, but this is the time now, believe me. Uh, so if I refresh the page, we will see that that time change because we are always generating the page whenever a user visits this page. And we will have always a newer version of the page. On the other hand, if we do the same, oh, it was called post one. Let's use the same example. Look again, this is the time now, 412. 
if we use the same exam the the same uh, slug but for static site generator we will see that the page was generated two minutes ago which is when i executed the build uh process to generate all the static pages and if i refresh the page i will always see the same page with the same time because this is a static page that was generated at build time it's not going to change if instead i use the post three for instance that doesn't exist and we didn't generate that static page, we will see that we are displaying a 404 error uh, because the, the root was not generated statically at build time. But if we do that with post two, we will see again the time where it was generated statically. Uh, to finish this, if we use st uh, incremental static regeneration for post one, we will see that the time of generation is the same because we generated the first version of the page at build time. But if I refresh, I will have the same time, the, the same time there because I'm visiting the static uh, page that was cached. But if I refresh again, we are seeing that because the 15 seconds that I defined before, now we have a different time because 15 seconds uh, have passed since the time of the first cache static page was generated. So we can do this again. I'm requesting this same time. 15 seconds again. If I request a slug that we didn't generate at, uh, at the beginning, boom, a new, a new time. So this was an example too, this, uh, to show you how uh, the different ways of um, rendering works. Some things that are going to be uh, developed in the future we uh, with uh, using Next.js, we will be able to regenerate more than one page at the same time instead of one page at a time. And the idea is to execute this revalidate process using uh, listening to external events like changing uh, something in the content management system or using a webhook. If you want to learn more, these two links. The first one is an e-commerce demo that Next.js created using incremental static regeneration and the second one is in case uh, you want to learn uh, more about Next.js framework learn advanced concepts or I don't know try something different than what I display in this presentation so thank you very much uh, thank you for your time and this opportunity if you have any question of, or if you want to talk about anything those are my uh, channels and again thank you very much Facundo, that was fantastic. Thank you so much for speaking with us today. Thank uh, you very much. <laughs> we, I was hearing comments just from the, the crowd here at the watch party around how it started from such a like introduction to like getting into specifics and even finishing up with a live demo. I feel like we really got a good idea of how that whole circle works. We did have some questions. We need to move on to the next speaker, but we want to have those answered. So over in the thread on the 200K channel, we're going to have you pop in there and answer those for us. So anyone who has questions, jump in there and we'll get those answered for you. Um, we're going to transition just a minute to get a new slide deck up and we'll uh, tee up the next speaker. So see you in just a sec. Thank you. <laughs>